Hello everybody, my name is Professor from my name is Barry from Mary Time Slap and today we will be looking at a comprehensive, well not really comprehensive, history of Bengal. And kind of like a history of the Indian subcontinent as a whole. Let's go back all the way to 1500. India is fragmented. There were a bunch of fighting kingdoms all over the place and Europe had not contacted it for hundreds of years at this point. The reason is because of the growing Ottoman Empire. The growing Ottoman Empire blocked the long coveted Silk Road, which was ancient and had, <clears throat> and had been one of the bonds between European and Asian trade. Now, that meant that Europe just had to find another way to that ripe trading center that was India. Mm. So, in 1497, Portugal was determined to do that. It was found out that what Christopher Columbus had done would not discover a new route to India, but found a completely new continent in 1493. So instead, Portugal found another way. What they first did was set up a captain named Vasco da Gama. Now, Vasco da Gama set off with three ships, the São Gabriel, um, the Sao Rafael and the Sao uh, and the Brio. There were not a chance that I pronounced even one of those three ships correctly. Now, he set up stone pillars everywhere he went to make sure um, he could retrace his steps. He first went from Portugal to the Cabo Verde Islands, what are now known as Cape Verde which were some islands off the coast of, let's say, West Africa. And after that, he went all the way down to the Cape of Good Hope, which is now in South Africa. Then he went a little bit upward to Mozambique. After that, he departed all the way into the Indian Ocean, and he finally went all the way into Kolkata. Now, he was kicked out in Kolkata after a very short while. Why? Well, because he didn't bring any sufficient gifts, and all he did was pretty much enslave the Indian people. So, after that, he went back. In 1502, he went there again. And he returned there with his three ships, and he was shoot out once again. So, um, Portugal hired a bunch of new captains to do his bidding. But the new captains were corrupt as well. So finally, Vasco da Gama returned in 1515 to fix the mistakes of his predecessor. And then he died. And so, a Portuguese colony was set up in India in 1503. Now that is the start of the colonial era in India. Now, a bit later, there were so many fragmented kingdoms in India, just like before. And it's 1727 now, and Britain was looking hungry for some colonies. So, pretty much everybody knew about this new tra uh, route to <coughs> India by now. While it was costly, it could gain you so much. So, what happened was, years before, called the British, it was like, Hey, dude, want to overthrow the Nawab of Bengal? All right, thanks. And Mir Jafar was actually the <coughs> Mir Jafar was actually the uh, commander in chief of the army of the Nawab of Bengal, Siraj Dola. Now, there were some reasons that the Europeans hated Siraj Dola. Number one, the Black Hole incident. Where due to Siraj Dola's negligence, it is estimated that about 40 people died. 40 Europeans died after being in prison. After, after that, um, his own military also kind of hated him because he alienated his military and his people from himself. And so, basically everybody was looking to turn against him. And so, um, Mir Zafar betrayed him. And in January of 1757, the British arrived to fulfill Mir Jafar's demand. While the military must have been like, Oh my God, he's here! So, uh, so Raju Dalla would be like, What are those little men landing here? 
I haven't seen that flag before. So, what happened next was in the Battle of Plassey, led by Robert Clive and Mir Jafar, against um, the, uh, the French allies, uh, against the allies of France and uh, the Nawab of Bengal, Britain won. And to celebrate, they set up a British puppet state with Mir Jafar as the leader. Now, Mir Jafar was a betrayer, and he got and he was the one who executed <coughs> Siraj in July of 1757, only a few months after the battle. Now that was the start of British rule in India. Over time, during the Anglo-Indian Wars, in which, <coughs> in which um, uh, br the British made alliances, trading alliances, and enemies with the, uh, the tiny, small kingdoms in India. And the Br uh, British East India Company expanded and expanded over time. Now, what is the British in East Indian Company? Well, this thing was established in 1600, originally as something for trading. But after 1727, it started managing land. Oh my goodness, truly the peak of capitalism. And so, it eventually went from managing a small part of Bengal to literally all of the Indian subcontinent. During the Anglo-Indian Wars, where Britain had some complex relations with all of the Indian kingdoms, they invaded, they allied, they invaded, they allied, um, they made enemies, they invaded over and over again. And they betrayed their allies as well. And eventually, they consolidated their rule over all of the Indian subcontinent. Now, this was happening around the 1800s. Now let's get to the end of British company rule in India. What happened was that in 1857, there was a huge rebellion. Why? Well, for one, the British were... <coughs> were unacknowledging of the religious beliefs of Hindus and Muslims. Number two, the British didn't really care about the livelihood of the Muslims and the Hindus. And number three, what happened was the final straw in the camel's back was that it was heard that um, the rifles that were used were stained with cow and pig grease. And you had to bite the rifle in order to start loading it. Now, this, now, um, cows are forbidden under Hindu belief, and pigs were forbidden under Muslim belief. So, that meant that the British were basically alienating both of them. However, modern historians know that the British didn't even know about what was happening. Probably didn't even know any a single thing about Hinduism or Islam, and that started the revolt. <laughs> During this revolt, <laughs> of quite a few people were killed, and this was the first Indian War of Independence, as it was called. <laughs> However, the rebellion was put down, although the British had to accept some reforms. First of all, the British East India Company was slapped out of India, and they were now administered under direct crown rule. The British East India Company still advised with trade over India, just like its humble beginning, until eventually it was dissolved in 1874. Now, under crown rule, things got a bit more stabilized, but things were also very bad. Now. In 1919 happened a massacre. This a massacre by a British officer. <coughs> now, in 1905, something huge happened. In 1905, Bengal was split. It was clear that, I mean, Britain's grip on India was starting to loosen. They had to divide and rule. And what they did was even worse. They had to split Bengal over religious lines. The Hindus in East Bengal were furious, while the West Bengalers, who are uh, Islamic, got some ideas. They thought, 
What if we created our own Muslim state based on solely Islam? And then Lucknow Pact. This Lucknow Pact was a pact between the INC, the Indian National Congress, and the Muslim League, which led for, for an independent Muslim state. To and so the Muslim League confirmed to pro, the Muslim League agreed to as well protest for Indian autonomy if the INC um, granted the rights to uh, I believe Muslim religious minorities. And so that was agreed. And that was the start of the dissolution of the British Raj and the breakup of India. Now in nineteen now in nineteen thirty nine, I mean in nineteen thirty nine it was clear British grip on India was starting to loosen even more. Because I mean, there were on the INC were protesting even more, and Gandhi himself set up a um, policy of non-violence, non-protest, just peaceful talks. So Gandhi himself set up his legacy of non-violence, and now it was pretty clear that things were starting to get bad for the British Raj. Protests were skyrocketing, and eventually Britain just had to let go. In 1947, in 1930, India declared independence, or rather the INC. However, they wouldn't get it until 1947. In 1947, Britain announced that it would officially be leaving India, that those suckers could do whatever they wanted now. In fact, most of the British Empire was collapsing by this point. They, it was at its biggest extent in 1920, and not even 30 years later, it all fell down. Now, now what happened after that was, well, fighting. Just like the small Indian kingdoms before. But instead of that, there were two big fighters. The Dominion of Pakistan, and the Republic of Pakistan, and the Dominion of India who were both independent nations under the British Commonwealth of Nations. And what happened was that all of India in 1947 was partitioned under religious lines in five weeks. And hundreds of, and thousands of people had to flee over borders. Hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands were killed or were starved or lost their families or lost their possessions and lost their memories. It was honestly the worst thing that could ever happen. A partition that happened in five weeks with the drawing of a red line over a map killed thousands of people and scarred thousands more for much longer than five weeks. And now, in 1947, the problem was that what was called East Pakistan, which is now Bangladesh, was separated from West Pakistan by a lot of India. And the problem problem was that West Pakistan and East Pakistan, besides, besides their religion, had absolutely nothing in common. Bengalis felt they had their own distinct identity. In 1948, immediately after the British Raj was dissolved, they started protesting for their own language. And this, and this brought to a peak when in 1948, the leader of the Muslim League and the first president of Pakistan, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, declared that Urdu would be the sole language and Bengali would not be recognized. That was a problem. And in 1952, this got to a head. Especially yesterday, on February 21, 1952, hundreds of protesters were shot down and killed because they simply wanted to speak their mother tongue.
This was one of the most solemn days in history for the Bengali people. Hundreds were killed because they wanted freedom. They wanted the right to do their own. And finally, in 1957, the Pakistani government conceded and made Bengali a co-official language. However, it didn't stop there. Bengali, the suppression of the Bengali people continued until 1971 when people couldn't take it anymore. During Operation Searchlight, 7,000 people, 7,000 Bengali intellectuals and Bengali nationalists were killed in a single night. Bones and blood were left on the street. And this led to the Declaration of Independence on March of 1971. A nine month war was fought between Pakistan and the newly formed Bangladesh. Eventually, India joined in and together they beat back Pakistan. <clears throat> Bangladesh won and Pakistan conceded and said it could have its independence. And finally, that is where we are today with Bangladesh. Brought to you by Brilliant.org. The Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science. 